But if I get underneath there and something else is broken, yeah, it's tough. <clears throat> anyway, it's your turn. <clears throat> is it? Yeah. We started part two. W- did I just ask that one? No, I asked that one. It's part two. You're talking about your car. We're not talking. We're not going to put that in. Hey, guys. Yeah, how's it going? Yeah, yeah. Welcome to part two. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's part two. <laughs> part two starts with a flash. <laughs> Still no Ryan. All right. <clears throat> doop a doop boop I should have refilled my coffee. <laughs> You're just going to have to deal with it. You can take a break after this. No, no, it's fine. Um, I'm a airsofter, 51. <laughs> I thought I said I'm a hairsofter. If you could airsoft in any Star Wars place, what would it be? The Death Star, Endor, Hoth. Those are the only places he named. No Tatooine? Like, like I said, he may not he may not have known all the places. Uh, I don't know. You can play in the forest any time, so no Endor. Okay. I, I just but I but I, I feel like if you're on Endor, then we could we could be airsofting on speeder bikes. Ooh, See what I'm saying? Like that's good. I don't know if those are I, used anywhere good. else. Okay. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. So, but that's okay. Good. So now, <clears throat> tattooing just you'd be you'd be dealing with sand. Yeah. And and it's barrel already, jams. It, yeah, it's, it's, it's already dry enough here. Mm-hmm. I don't need to go to tattooing. That's that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, Hoth would be pretty cool, though. Okay. I'd say that's like, I mean, considering Empire Strike Back, it's like my favorite. It's just like, very wet. It's very snowy. Oh, Hoth is snow. Sorry. I was thinking <laughs> I was thinking where Luke went to go train. Dagobah. That's not Hoth. That's, that's Dagobah. Dagobah. Thank yeah. you. Wait, or is that the Dagobah system? No, Dagobah. Um, trust the inner nerd. I'm not even Roger. wearing my Star Wars yeah, trust, shirt. Trust, I feel embarrassed. Trust Roger. But, uh, but my Hoth friend would Billy would be, be very no, disappointed yeah. in me. Hoth would definitely be it. Okay. Yeah. Cold. Cold. Yeah. Snow. Yeah. But we could all ride Tauntauns. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. And we can cut one open to stay warm later. I don't know if everyone needs to do that. <laughs> like, you just see all the Tauntauns go down at once. Just, <laughs> what are you guys doing? It's cold. <laughs> um... I would like to airsoft oh. in one of the. No, no, you're fine. No, no, go ahead. No, no, no. Keep that no, out. no, no, no. Uh, I would like to airsoft in one of the in one of the hangar bays of the Federation starships. From like, are we talking prequels? No, like from like, like from four, five, and six. Remember when okay. they when okay. they right, locked so like, onto the Millennium Falcon? Okay, so like a Death Star or like one of the yeah, one of the Empire. Death Star, sorry, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Jeez, Roger, just just let me correct myself, man. You're like, I mean, a starship was also, <coughs> a, I think, a correct. You know where I'd I, like I to play Death airsoft Star, but even I'm, I'm more. That for, he's just being like the the hollow deck right of the USS Enterprise. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. You're bringing out the Trekkie part, though. Yeah. Are you Trekkie or are you? Uh, okay. I'm. I'm more. Man, this is sad. I'm more a Trekkie than a Star Wars that's fan. Fine. Fanatic. Yeah, that's all right. I'm not that much of a Star Wars fan. So I mean, I am a Star Wars fan, but I'm not going to judge you because George Lucas ruined Star Wars. And well, a little hard. Sorry, George Lucas created Star Wars, then ruined Star Wars, and then hopefully J.J. Abrams will fix Star Wars. I, I I'm afraid that J.J. Abrams is just going to make the new Star Wars feel just like the the reenvisioning of Star Trek. No, I don't think he will though, because he brought Star Trek was supposed to be have like that comedic. It's campy. Yes, but that's the way the show was. Yes, I, and then and then you make but the movie not campy. No, it was still campy though in parts. Come on, that's why they casted some of the people that they did is to make it campy. I guess. I mean, yeah, no, no, tr- you know, and then, like, I think that he will be able to bring back what was missing, the grunge that was missing in the prequels. Okay, I'm with you there. The prequels, <clears throat> the prequels were frustrating, yes. mostly because of Hayden Christensen. No, that was a big reason, but big there were several other reasons. Yeah. There's a certain talking CG character that never needed to exist. Jar Jar Binks was my favorite character. Get the heck out. How dare you? <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Go marry an Ewok. <laughs> what? <laughs> All right. Next question, please. <laughs> what? That, that was getting really good. It's not the uh, USS Enterprise, by the way. It's Starship Enterprise. Oh, cool. I put I this apologize. one in. I was really hoping I'd get to this one. Jacob Kuhn asked, hashtag SpongeBob Matt. Nope. Did it already. We've done that. We've been there. No. We did the voice already. Hashtag SpongeBob There's Matt. no point in doing it again. We'll bring it up later. All right. Here. I'll put it back in there. Okay. It's too recent. Give me a couple weeks, guys. 
everybody thinks she's the voice. I'll do voice other voice. accents for you. <clears throat> Hi guys. Oh, sorry. This is. I'm just gonna have to make a YouTube channel. Yes, you will. For me horsing around and not about airsoft. Stuff. Yeah, that's a great idea. Okay. It'll be Evic Matt. No, I can't. I can't use the name. So it'll just be Matt. I don't know. E? I, I don't know. I'll I'll figure it out. BMW I've got to figure out how to use a camera first. <laughs> you know how to use a phone. I'm not going to put poor quality videos on there. At least That's it has half a production of YouTube. Value. I know. <laughs> so we're like 90% of YouTube. It's Sorry. True. Uh, Hung Fu asks, hey guys, if you were in a post-apocalyptic airsoft deathmatch and had to survive in pairs, who would you pick as your partner and why? Post-apocalyptic. Then you need somebody who's very deceiving, hurtful, and uh, manipulating. Roger. It's not, <laughs> no, 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 I'm not choosing Roger. So I need somebody who's... Uh, would kill people, looks innocent, and very deceiving. I'm Roger is all of those things except no, looking I'm, innocent. No, I'm picking my wife. <laughs> oh! <laughs> She'll make like, all those Hi, things. Hi, guys! And then comes out of nowhere with an airsoft shank. <laughs> yeah. Wait, like, there's an airsoft game, right? Yeah, it's an airsoft one. Post-apocalyptic airsoft Oh, yeah, game. no. My wife would be like, pulls out her machete. Like, she's like, I'm cute and innocent. And there's a machete in your face next second. <laughs> you know how she is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She'd be like, I I'm doing nothing wrong. And then all of a sudden, you're dead. Perfect. That's what you need. Post-apocalyptic. Well, I would think like if it would be like a game where you're like surviving, kind of. Well, kind of post-apocalypse, so you gotta get specific there. Are we talking like Mad Max post-apocalyptic? Are we talking about radioactive Fallout post-apocalyptic? Yeah, we're talking about Fallout. I would think Are if looking like alien invasion, resources have been mined post-apocalyptic. I don't know. Or are we talking about future dystopia like Blade Runner? <laughs> There's too much to really choose. That's he not wasn't really post apocalyptic. Or That's more like not... Adventure Time post apocalyptic. What? Adventure Time. I was what? thinking more like this is the end post apocalyptic. So everything's on fire. So everything's now. on fire, okay. and you know, there's a giant. Fire and brimstone. Yeah, and there's a giant. What is a brimstone? I don't know. I'll look that up. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I choose my wife in those kind of situations. Okay. Zombie apocalypse for sure. Okay. Uh,. I don't know. I feel like I you'd need somebody that's good at negotiation. Like I said, I, you need somebody who's mani manipulative, manipulative. Sorry. I think I think I'd take Dave <laughs> <laughs> from Airsoft Obsessed. Yeah, he could pull it off. Like, I, like I feel um, like he's big enough that people would be intimidated. Enough that we could get things done. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's a good answer. Well, I mean, Dave, Dave is, uh, let me see, Dave's doing that. Yeah, did he tell you about that thing that he did with his school? Yes. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. Did you hear he, he, Tom Hanks respond? Yeah, Tom Hanks did respond. If you guys don't know. Uh, hey, what did he say, gear up or something? Yeah, like, gear I think up. He's yeah, going. he said gear up. So, I mean, uh, yeah, I guess uh, t the school that Tom is at, and uh, he helped run a program that got Tom Hanks to come to home. The Dave is at. School that Dave, Dave is at. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm. So, Cool. Congratulations. Congrats. Yeah. If Airsofters do big things. Yeah. I don't think enough people realize, like, Airsofters are in every industry. What do you do? <clears throat> I do Airsoft. Airsoft <laughs> is in every industry, including Airsoft. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have five more minutes. Okay. Four more minutes. Uh, Lego Man 3777. Mini bikes in Milsim? Yes. Mini bikes? Like... Little the little 50cc <laughs> motorcycles? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> if you could have, okay, if you could have the gun mounted to the handlebars, <laughs> and then bing, bing, and you'd have to figure out how to, like, you know. But you could easily, like, one-hand that. Yeah. You could easily one-hand that, so you can. I just feel like the likelihood of someone getting run into would be really high. Who cares? They're mini bikes. It's not going to hurt that bad. Not Maybe not an adult. No kids allowed. It's a Milsim event. Okay. It's ruining my immersion. And and a mini bike would not ruin your immersion? <laughs> no. Because you, you you think about it. Let's say you dropped a pallet full of mini bikes into a war torn a war torn nation and what or like let's say you went back to Afghanistan about four or five years ago and you gave a bunch of so soldiers mini bikes. They would be so happy. They they would do whatever they could to drive around with them, to mess around with them, on base at least. <laughs> You're probably right. <laughs> no, I know I'm right. And we'd see we'd see music videos featuring yeah. 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 You wanna do one more? Crappily edited music videos. <laughs> but I love those music videos. We should do two more. Alright, we'll see. 
I picked a really long question, so we'll, hit, we'll see how long this takes. Brian Gay asked, "Hey guys, I'm looking at. Uh, let me let me hold on. <clears throat> this is. You know I can speak every language but Greek. Ch test me, ask me. Come on, give me a language." Why don't you prove it? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So well, give me a language. Any I, language. I don't really... Just pick a language. I, I'll speak All it. I know is a little bit of German. So pick, but you pick, already, pick, I, a, pick a language. Anything. Uh, Italian. That's Greek to me. <laughs> Got it! <laughs> I don't uh, get it. Anyway, this is a question... It's an old uh, phrase, like when you don't know yeah, something. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get it. Okay, so uh, um, I guess this is looking for... A call radio or something. I'm looking at it. Zoo Tactical, USMC Intercom, Radio PTT, Motorola Tupe, so I can only talk with her friend who is that person with the same radio. It's about it's about communications, but it's very it's worded kind of poorly. Okay, let me see. Uh, <clears throat> I'm looking at. So it's asking about radios. Please tell me I'm not retarded. Like I'm just, oh, okay. I'm um, misunderstanding it, but I, I kind of yeah. get the idea. So, so I only could talk with her friend who has it in another person with the same radio, or could talk to a person with the same radio. Okay. Well, I think he's what he's asking is um, the the Z Tactical USMC Intercom PTT the two the, 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 with a Motorola okay. two way. Okay. Um, so as long as if you're if you're getting into comms, there there are. Um, your standard kind of Motorola talk about style radios, which are there's Kenwood, um, there's right. Midland, there's a whole plethora of them, right. and they and, all have different connections. And all of those use a channel system, so channels one, two, three, four, five, which with sub channels. That's a standard GMRS right. system. So, those, and then they have sub channels, which are the same as CTCSS codes. Now, what you have to understand about um, consumer grade radios like that is those channels actually correspond to an actual frequency yes. which is an FRS GMR, GMRS what frequency kind of get with one of these which is in a certain range i think they're in like the 400 to 470 megahertz range and i think that's either no, UHF no, or VHF 170 to something and then they switch around all the ones you'd be using in FRS GMRS are in the 400s not all i think so well, anyway, anyway, the point is, you, you if you get one of those radios that already has the GMRS pro programs into it, you just find you can tactical communicate with any other radio on the yeah, same any radio yeah. on the same channel or subnet. Now, if you use a radio that uses frequencies, as long as you've got yourself an FRS GMRS table, so you can enter the same frequency that would be yeah. you know compatible with one of the talk about style radios, then you can all talk to each other. And as long as it's compatible with the pinout on your radio, yeah, the PTT use... doesn't matter. It could be any brand PTT. Yep. So. There we go. That was a confusing written question. Yes, it was. All right, you can pick the last question. We don't want part two to be too long. Okay. <sighs> what? This is, we just had an apocalypse question. Uh, Paul Simonovich. You can put that one back. Okay. Paul, we will come back to your question because it's about apocalypses. And I feel like we could answer that. Look at that thing. In another episode. Sure. That was a huge fuzzy. Anyway, go ahead. Oh, that's the Ryan and Roger take our places. <laughs> They're here now, but we'll do that another time. Yeah. For a full episode. Yeah. Uh, it's a SpongeBob Matt. What? <laughs> here. We are cheating. What are you going to do about it? Huh? <laughs> yeah. You're just going <laughs> to. That's what it's so shining example about the Airsoft community. Okay, David Daughters asks... Because you're a prime example, Roger. Insert. Would you, who would you rather have as a best friend? <laughs> Ted, Mark Wahlberg, or Flash Gordon? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. What? Flash Gordon. <laughs> Flash Gordon. Flash. I, yeah, I wouldn't want Mark Wahlberg as my friend. Actually, Mark Wahlberg... That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. I wouldn't want Ted as my friend, though. I wouldn't want Ted as my friend, either. Ted's an idiot. Yeah. I'd Ted. say Flash Gordon. Yeah. It's really weird because the three of them really have no correlation to each other that much. The movie, the movie Ted. I, I know the movie. I'm, I understand that. But yeah. I'm just saying, like, in terms of personalities, they're oh. all completely different. So it's just kind of weird. But, you know, hey, that was a strange question. I, I could hang out with Mark Wahlberg. You could hang out with cool. Yeah, you'd be cool because you want to act. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be cool. All right. Flash Gordon would be funny. All right, we're going to do this. This is the last question. Yeah. 
And it's it's for me. It's my video game question. Uh, Kaden Zero asks, question for George. I know you were in the video game industry. What video games did you help make? Crappy ones. <laughs> if you want, we can have... <laughs> I can list. Uh, uh, let's see. I worked on a game called Black Sight Area 51 from Midway. I don't know if you've ever played that. It's horrible. Midway made a fighter jet game that I used to play. Yeah, that was a horrible game. Um, Didn't get a sequel? What? I don't know. To this Roger game that I'm talking to, about? Yeah, Roger asked if we got a sequel. It's mediocre enough it got a sequel. <laughs> this is when Midway had money. So, I mean, I worked on that. I worked on a few levels for that. Uh, a bunch of other games that didn't get released. I, I got in the industry in 2007. Industry tanked a year later. If you know... I don't know anything about video games. Uh, I, I did work on some cool titles. I did some small work on God of War. Uh, did some small amount of work on Heist 2. Did some small amount of work on Line Riders for Wii. I don't even know what that is. You don't know what Line Riders is? The original Line Riders? I don't know what that is. What did you do like, in, in the early 2000s when you were in college? I didn't... I didn't even have a video game console. <laughs> it wasn't a video game. It was a flash game where you draw sled lines. What? Yeah, and then you'd race the. Sl it's it's. Did you ever anybody play Line Riders? Yeah. yeah. The original one, like yeah. the Flash game, on, right? On, on the web browser. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It what? Was, it was fun, wasn't it? You, you drew lines. It would think like MS Paint. You drew a slope or a line, and then you hit play, and then the this guy on the sled would slide down the line. And you, the purpose would be to make the coolest track without him crashing, which yeah. was really easy to crash. And that's all we did in college when we were bored was <laughs> draw that. So anyway, I, remember I worked the on Windows a Wii game, game that was based off of Line Rider. Downhill. Wait, you said college? That was like my high school. Yeah, I was in college. Wait, wait, I mean, you. This kind was of 2000, 2004 to 2007. <laughs> I was in college. Yeah. If you, wait, when did you do the Wii one, though? The Wii one I did in 2008. They made the uh, Wii one, and I worked. Just wait, Wii, yeah. like the video yeah, game? Yeah, no, yeah, the video game console made a version of it, so we worked on that. We worked on the cinematic for that. Uh, I worked on a video game. It was called. Uh, LRC or Lunar Racing Championships, and the goal was it was a racing game on the moon. I feel like that'd be really slow based on current lunar racer platforms. It was really. It, I don't think it ever got Very released. Tedious, it, like... I don't know. You can look up the game. I don't think it ever got released. The company went bankrupt before the game came out, so I don't know. Um, I took my payout and ran. Uh, <laughs> what else? Yeah, yeah. This is like a trend, as you're seeing here. Is no, I didn't work on any good video games. That's why. <laughs> hey, kids, making a video game you don't plan on releasing? Call George. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just got really bad luck. I basically worked for, out of all the companies I worked for in the video game industry, I'd say 75% of them, the studios I was working for are no longer in existence. Oh, wow. That sucks. And then the other ones really don't count because they're like smaller production studios. Like, I mean, there's, so it's it's really kind of hit or miss. But, you know, I've, I've worked on some good projects for other things, like I worked on a project for Disney a while back, and the amusement park, not the, yeah, but it doesn't matter. <clears throat> I, I can't really say much more than that. I'm being modest, aren't I? That was a really cool question, actually. I, I thought it would be funny, because, on... I mean, it, it was it was a good time, uh, you know, and um, you learn a lot. You meet a lot of interesting people. Um, I sat on a desk uh, with the guy who made Wreck-It Ralph. Do you maybe have any... Uh, words of advice for some airsofters that are that are interested in video entering game, the video yeah. game. Video community. game industry is a tough industry, and you know it's it's not for lack of talent or anything like that. It's it's like the film industry with you know with anybody is use a lot of networking, a lot of luck, a lot of luck. And there's a lot of people also trying to do the same thing. Right, right. You know, there's plenty of talent out there. You know, I know a bunch of friends. Like I, the the problem was is my my focus, which was more on the modeling and texturing side and asset creation side really got dried up really quick because of a lot of outsourcing problems. Interesting. Uh, like, a lot of stuff was getting outsourced to India or China. So <clears throat> that portion of what I was doing was very not in demand. Gotcha. So, but, I mean, if you went into, like, do... I know a lot of people who are in uh, doing um, motion capture cleanup. That's got good money in it, and those people are still working. Um, I know somebody who's working up at Pixar in Vancouver who's an old friend of mine from high school who is a FX guy. Uh, just does particle s simulation, so explosions, stuff like that. Pixar's in Vancouver? They have a Pixar, yes, they have a Pixar in Vancouver. But he also worked like Blur and a few other really good places. Never heard of that either. Blur is, uh, 
never mind. It doesn't matter. All right. They're a cinematic company. Well, if you guys have any uh, more personal questions about video game stuff, you can always hit up George yeah, on, you his, uh, I'll tell you on his Evie George you Facebook truth, page. But. Uh, but thanks for tuning in to the second part of our two-part feature from the Not So Round Table. Keep asking questions. Put them in the comment section down below. Those will go down into the helm of reasoning. If we, uh, if we post we more your question for a later time, I apologize. But uh, we want to keep a, like a nice... Uh, distribution of fun questions instead of answering all the apocalyptic ones in the same episode and things like that. So keep asking interesting questions. Come up with um, funny stuff, guys. I, I mean, we, we get a ton of questions, and we illustrate this all the time. Please don't ask questions, is this gun good? Well, I mean, that's it's completely so generic. subjective. You know, it's so subjective and generic that we can't really answer that. Mm -hmm. We want questions that are funny, because that's what or, entertaining is. Or about the world of airsoft and yeah. not necessarily the product no there were people are saying this show used to be about airsoft it's not anymore yeah that's what i mean we, we need to bring it back to being about airsoft okay good questions about airsoft then mm -hmm. mm -hmm. roger's like got his feet up back there behind the camera i know he's just hanging out <clears throat> all right guys thanks again we'll see you next time we get more coffee <laughs>